In today's video, my son's going to make a lamp for a school project, and we're using scrap wood. The first step is to cut all four pieces down to about the same size. Then from there, we went over to the planer and put them through about three times on each side, which we didn't film all of it. The intent here was to make sure that the rounded edges on framing lumber are gone and it glues up a little more snugly. Once they had all run through, we took the two boards that are going to be in the center of the lamp and found the center point. And what we're going to do is make a channel so that way the cord can run through the center of the boards. You can figure out the height first, and then you move your fence over to the marks that you set. And here we left in this upcoming mistake, so that way you know not to do the same thing. If you're going to leave your dust collection on there, you have to cut through the entire board. So if you're just going to cut out a portion like we did, it's not going to be able to go through because of the riving knife on the back of it. So we started over after removing the dust collection, and... There you go. So once you get the first cut, move the fence over to get the other side, and then run through that way. But please make sure you do not start your saw when the board's sitting on top of the blade. Thankfully he didn't turn it on before I was able to move it back for him. You do not want to have that board kick back and hit you in the face or any other body part. So after the boards were run through, we just took a simple chisel and got rid of any of the little high points. From there we used the fence and the miter gauge just to push the boards through and get them much closer to the same length. My miter saw doesn't cut 90 degree angles anymore, so this is the best thing I can do. And I did have a little bit of a clogged glue, not glue gun, but the glue here. So that's why the streams are a little bit smaller than they should have been. So the first part, we took the two middle boards, glued them up, and then clamped them, let those set up overnight. Once they had dried, we came back the next day and glued the other two on the outsides. And I wasn't paying attention when he was clamping them up, so it's a little bit off center, but we're going to turn it so it'll take care of itself. And after that we're glued up, just used a paint can to make a pretty nice circle. And from there, we'll take it back to the table saw and cut off as much of the excess as we could with just some simple 45 degree cuts. So you don't have to get too scientific here. And the goal of cutting off this excess is to save the amount of time you have to use it on the lathe. And make sure you don't stand right behind the piece that you're cutting because some of those scraps will kick back as well. And nobody likes anything hitting them in the gut or the groin, so you really want to listen to that. You can see it wanted to kick back and stopped. And then once the glue dries, you get this oddly satisfying removal of the dried up glue. It didn't come off in one piece like we wanted, but it's still fun. That's for me, at least. So once we get it cut up, we put it on the lathe. And 
you can see well, after we put the tailstock up to it, we've turned on the lathe and you'll hear that it wasn't completely centered. And I don't enjoy trying to shape something that's that far off. So we took it off camera, we took it back to the saw and trimmed it up a little bit more. So here it'll spin a little bit more smoothly without having to scare you as much. As you can see his first go at it, he got a little, a little aggressive. Certainly need to ease into it. When it snatches the tool out of your hand like that, you, you tend to only make that mistake once. So here he just had some pencil lines that he drew on there and had a really nice design in his head that he wanted mapped out and it ended up working really nicely. I will say this framing lumber though, it definitely wreaks havoc on havoc on our sinuses. He and I, the, the dust seems really fine and it's a little bit of a unique smell coming off of it, but our noses were pretty stopped up for a couple of days after this. So it's, I tried to get him to wear a mask, but he wouldn't want to do it either. And here we put on pre-stained conditioner. The intent is if we were going to stain it, this will keep it from having blotchiness on it because framing lumber definitely will have dark spots and light spots if you don't do pre-stained conditioner. After that dried, we did a really light sanding off camera and then put this polycrylic on there and did four coats of it. Once those four coats had dried, took a Forstner bit and put a shallow hole right at the top just to sit the base of the where the bulb's going to go. So sometimes on the lathe, these things get locked in there pretty well, so you have to use the the tool and a wrench to get them off. And we made sure that he was extra cautious taking it off. We didn't want to put any dents or scratches in it by accidentally dropping. So once it was off the lathe, the bottom had a little bit of a lip on it, so we got some 100 grit sandpaper, put some double-sided tape on it, which took us a while. Thankfully, we uh, have the ability to edit this because it took us a long time to get this backing off of this tape. Once that was done, just flip it over, put it on the table or any other flat surface that you have close by, and then just hold it. You really want to hold it at the bottom of the lamp, not the top when you're sanding it. And here I intentionally went in reverse first. I wanted to make a little bit of a starting spot then turned the drill in forward and drilled as small of a hole as I could get without having too much of a complication getting these wires through. I didn't want to have a large hole on the side where the, it would be really visible. The only downside of that is it took us quite a while to get the wires through once we were feeding them. So the school did hook us up with the cord there is no grounding wire, even though it's got the three-prong outlet to it. So we just fed it from the top first and through the bottom, and then after a few failed tries off camera, we were able to get a twist tie where we used it as essentially like fish tape. So just wrapped it around the two wires, which we had already wrapped together, and then just fed that through the hole. We gave it a good five or six tries, and if it was not going to work, we were going to use a little bit of a bigger drill bit, but thankfully, teamwork made it happen. It's a good six foot long quarter, so there's plenty of room to get it plugged in across the room. And there you can see the Forstner bit hole that we made. It sits in nicely. 
So while he's putting the super glue on, right when he gets finished, I sprayed some activator in the lamp. And with plastic, you certainly want to move fast. So we pulled the slack out and just to show in real time how quickly that glue sets up once you put the activator. You don't need to put much pressure on it. And within 10 seconds it was completely securely in place. And here, there's our second mistake of he connected the the wires back to it, but we forgot to put the bottom part on. So I noticed it, but didn't want to say anything because I wanted to make sure that someone else besides me makes a mistake on camera every now and then. Sorry, buddy. Here we are. We have a finished lamp. Get our bulb put in there, and the only bulbs we have are daylight bulbs, so they are quite bright. But the shapes he picked out, he did a great job, and with a good bit of sanding and polyacrylic, it has a nice sheen to it, and it's kind of tricky to tell in this light because that bulb's so bright, but you can see a little bit more in this still picture. So thanks for watching.